everybody, I'm David. And I'm Paul. And we're with TheDiceyReview.com. And today we're going to be looking at the two-player card game Crystal Clans from Plaid Hat Games. Crystal Clans comes with all of the components that you see here, including a game board, one initiative token, six clan decks including their reference cards, two player reference cards, and 15 crystal cards. For setup, you'll place the game board in the center of the table. Next, each player will shuffle their clan deck and place it in its designated spot on the game board, place their clan reference and their player reference cards in their designated spots. Each player draws five cards from their draw pile. Next, the players will randomly determine a first player and their opponent will draw an extra card. Next, place the initiative token on the zero space of the initiative track. Next, the crystal deck will be shuffled and three crystal cards will be revealed face up next to the board. The goal of Crystal Clans is to deploy units on the board to successfully control crystal zones. If you control two crystal zones at the same time, you can claim a crystal. The first player to claim four crystals immediately wins. The game board is divided up into zones. The different types of zones are standard zones, the home zone, crystal zone, initiative track, initiative neutral spaces, and a spot for your collected crystals. This is a clan unit card. Each clan card has a unit section that contains information like the cost to summon, attack and defense, the unit ability, unit type, and activation cost. There is also a battle section for each unit card. This section is only applicable in battle and we will look at that in more detail later in the video. Each player will also have a double-sided clan reference card that displays the clan's name and signature ability. On the reverse side of the card, there's a listing of all of the cards in the clan's deck. Players can claim crystal cards throughout the game that will bring them closer to victory. Each crystal card will list the cost to claim that crystal and the crystal's one-time effect. Crystal Clans utilizes something the rulebook refers to as initiative. Initiative is tracked using this marker. Each action in the game costs a certain amount of initiative. Each time a player takes an action, they move the initiative marker towards their opponent based on how much initiative their action costs. After taking an action, if the initiative marker is still on your side of the track or in one of the highlighted neutral spaces, you'll take another action. Players will continue to take actions like this until one of their actions causes the initiative marker to be on the opponent's side of the track. When this happens, it's now your opponent's turn to take actions until they push the marker to your side of the track. Turns will continue in this way. Now that we've looked at how the initiative system works, let's look at each action in more detail. There are five actions a player can choose from on their turn. They can take them in any order and use the same one multiple times. The first of these actions is to summon. To summon units, choose up to three unit cards from your hand. Pay the summon cost for each unit by moving the initiative marker and then place those units in your home zone. When you summon units, they will be formed into what the game refers to as a squad. A squad is up to three units stacked on top of each other in a way that their stats are all visible. A single unit in a zone is also considered a squad. The unit that's uncovered in your squad is considered to be on top. This is important because the unit that's on top of the squad will often have an ability. A unit's ability that's marked with a fire icon is a battlefield ability and is only active if that unit is on top of the squad. An ability that doesn't have this icon takes place no matter where the unit is in the stack. In addition to this, damage in battle is assigned top-down, so the top unit in each squad takes the first hit. It's important to note that the same player may never have multiple squads in the same zone. If you are moving a squad into a zone where you already have a squad, you have to combine the two squads. You can then reorder the squad, placing the combined units into any new order you want. You can, however, share a zone with one enemy squad. It's also important to note that you can never have more than three units in a squad. If you would ever have more than three, you immediately choose units to discard until there are three in your squad. Discarded units aren't considered to be destroyed, so they wouldn't trigger abilities that require unit destruction. The second action a player can take is to activate a squad. To activate a squad, you would pay the initiative equal to the highest single activation cost within that squad. So in this example, a player would pay two initiative to activate this squad. Then the player can take three optional steps. First, the player can reorder the squad, which just means they can rearrange the stack in any way they want. Then, they can move either the entire squad one adjacent zone, 
or they can move a portion of that squad and leave the rest of the squad in the original zone. If a player chooses to split a squad like this, the split squads are then considered to be two separate and unique squads. It's important to note that a squad can never leave a zone that also contains an enemy squad. Finally, a player can choose to initiate a battle with an enemy squad if they share the same zone. Each battle will follow these four steps. First, each player has to choose a battle card to play from their hand. If they have no cards in hand, they play one from the top of their deck. Each player will simultaneously reveal their chosen battle cards. Each player then compares their two battle cards looking only at the battle section of each card. The symbol on the bottom left of each card is the battle style, and it will trigger an effect on your opponent's card and vice versa. There are three battle styles. Your opponent's battle style will trigger an effect either on the left or right side of the battle section of your card. In this example, the Stone Clan's played unit card would have the right side of their battle section triggered. The Skull unit would have the left side of their battle section triggered. We've added a unit to each squad to illustrate how attack and defense are calculated and how damage is assigned. Then damage is applied simultaneously using the stats of each squad. The squad's total damage is equal to the combined attack value of each unit in the squad, plus any modifiers gained. And the defense, or how much damage the squad can withstand, is equal to the combined defense value of each unit in the squad. Damage is assigned top-down. If the total damage done is equal to or greater than a unit's defense, that's enough to kill a unit. And that unit is destroyed and is placed in the discard pile. If the total damage done is equal to or greater than the defense value of two or all three units, they are destroyed as well. So in this example, the Skull Unit Squad would deal 7 damage plus a modifier of 2 for a total of 9 damage. This is only enough to take out the Siege Tower. The Stone Clan does 12 damage, and the Skull Clan's defense is only 3. So this damage is more than enough to defeat the entire squad. If any ability or battle card provides defense as a bonus, that amount of defense reduces your opponent's attack value before damage is assigned. After all of these steps take place, the player's battle cards are discarded. Any destroyed units will also be discarded. The one exception is if a triggered battle card ability has this symbol. If this is the case, the player can keep that battle card in their hand. A score action allows a player to claim a crystal card and can be taken by a player if they control two crystal zones. You control a zone if you have a squad there and your opponent doesn't. To claim a crystal card, you select one of the three face-up crystal cards next to the board. Pay the initiative cost in the upper right by moving the initiative marker, and then place that crystal card in your collected crystal's space. You immediately replace the chosen crystal from the top of the crystal deck. Crystal cards will usually have a one-time ability that takes place when you acquire it, or if you flip it face down during gameplay. A crystal card that's face down still counts as one of the four needed to win. The next action a player can take is to replenish. To take a replenish action, a player must pay three initiative. The player can discard any cards they wish and then draw back up to five cards. If a player has control of their opponent's home zone, meaning they have a squad there and their opponent doesn't, they can invade. To invade, a player pays three initiative and then the opponent has to discard cards equal to your squad's attack value. If a player ever has to discard or draw a card and they can't because their deck is empty, their opponent gets a free crystal card paying no initiative for it. It's important to note that when making your opponent discard, they get to stop discarding if they're forced to reshuffle. So in our example, where we had 12 damage but only 6 cards in the deck, the player would discard 6 and reshuffle, giving their opponent a free crystal, and then they stop discarding. They don't have to discard 6 more from their newly reshuffled deck. If a player has 4 crystals at any time, they immediately win. When drawing a starting hand, a more experienced player may want to mulligan. At the start of the game, before choosing a start player, a player can choose to place any number of cards from their starting hand back into the deck, reshuffle, and then draw back up to five. If any card text ever contradicts the rulebook, the card text takes precedence. If there are ever multiple game effects that would take place at the same time, the active player gets to choose the order that they are resolved. Cards will have deck construction symbols on them. These symbols aren't used yet in the game, but will be utilized with future expansions to allow for deck customization. All right, everybody, that was our video. Thanks so much for watching. We hope that it was helpful and we hope that it was informative. 
And if you'd like to read more from us, check out our website, thediceyreview.com. Or if you'd like to hear more, check out our podcast, The Dicey Review. You can also find us on social media, all under The Dicey Review. And make sure and check out our guild on boardgamegeek.com. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, we'll see you at the table.